Impact Wrestling Slammiversary 2020, it's in the books. Overall, I think Impact Wrestling had a pretty damn good showing for themselves. That's my general feelings on the show. Before I get into anything else, Road to 650 subs and then Road to 1000. So if you're checking out the content for the first time tonight, hit the sub button. If you enjoy anything you hear, you know, do that. Like, sub, all that kind of good stuff. But anyway, you're not here for that. Basically, TNA Slammiversary, sorry, Impact Wrestling Slammiversary, overall, like the buzz, there was a lot of hype surrounding this date today, July 18th, 2020, this show, who would make their appearance, or, you know, which ex WWE guys would come back, and overall, I'd say it was, it was good as far as who came back, so, or came to Impact, so we had Heath Slater, Heath Slater came in, uh, we had the Good Brothers, um, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, you know, they announced a signing about a day ago now, so it wasn't a big shock, but it was cool to see them at the end of the main event. We had, additionally, Eric Young, which was a bit of a swerve, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So, we had a few ex WWE guys. Personally, I thought EC3, or you know, Matt Cardona, or Zack Ryder, would make an appearance. They did not. I thought there'd be a couple of other guys, perhaps a Rusev, wasn't to be, but... Anyway, for what we got, overall, I'd say Impact Wrestling did a pretty damn good job. There are only seven matches on this show, all of which were good. I, there, there weren't any, like, bad matches, which is good, thank Christ. All the matches offered something, brought something to the table. I thought the show flowed really well from the opener, which the tag team, like, the um, open challenge where the Rascals called out any tag team, the Motor City Machine Guns, made their return to um, Impact Wrestling, which that was really good. Then we had Tommy Dreamer against uh, Moose, which, I mean, that was a bit of fun, was what it was. Then with the um, Knockout Scorlet, which was, like, that's kind of subjective. Some people loved it, loved it online, some people hated it. I was kind of in between. It, it was all right. It was what it was. Nothing too special, but nothing terrible by any means. We had Chris Bay, Willie Mack. That was a really good X Division match. Then, the North versus Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan. Deanna Perrazzo, you know, won the title from Jordan Grace, and Eddie Edwards won the Fatal 5 elimination match to become the Impact World Champion. So, that's your basic rundown of results. Without further ado, I'm just going to get into the review for this show. So, in no particular order, I'm just going to talk about this first. We had the X Division Championship on the line. Chris Bay was, you know, wrestling Willie Mack. So, Willie Mack was the champion coming in. Willie Mack, I've seen plenty of people online, and on Twitter especially, say they want to see Willie Mack versus Keith Lee, which would be an awesome matchup. Like, Willie Mack, so agile for his size, just like Keith Lee. He's nowhere near as big as Keith Lee, Willie Mack. You know, nowhere near as tall, not as, like, overweight, but still, Willie Mack's, you know, beast. So, yeah, he took on Chris Bay. The match was the shortest match of the night. It only went 10 minutes, but for what they did, I thought it was a really damn good match. It was entertaining. It didn't outstay its welcome. Some great moves showed off in that match. Chris Bay is, you know, exceptional. He really is. Chris Bay is fantastic, so... It was really cool to see Chris Bay become the new X Division champion. The X Division in Impact Wrestling, it's always one of the strengths of TNA, or sorry, TNA, Impact Wrestling. Basically, well, if you haven't gathered already, I'm someone who hardly watches Impact Wrestling. I'm someone who, tonight was the first time I've actually watched an Impact Wrestling show in like five years. Just, just like a lot of people, like the, the buzz and the interest surrounding Slammiversary tonight was through the roof. Slammiversary was trending number one for like ages. Like, throughout the whole night, Slammiversary was, like, worldwide trending. So, yeah, big ups to Impact Wrestling. So, that was that. Then, at the co-main event of the night was Deonna Perrazzo taking on Jordan Grace for the uh, Knockouts World Championship. This was a pretty good match. 15 minutes it went. Deonna Perrazzo, Jordan Grace. It was entertaining. Jordan Grace wrestles the kind of style, which I feel like Nia Jax probably should wrestle. Like, Jordan Grace, her thing, kinda, is that she's, like, bigger than the other Knockouts. And, you know, like, her, her style actually kind of reflects it, which is cool to see. She's actually entertaining in the ring, unlike someone like a Nia Jax. So, yeah, Jordan Grace, Deonna Perrazzo, it was an entertaining match. In the end, Deonna Perrazzo won the Impact Knockouts Championship. So, good on Deonna Perrazzo. Awesome to see her having success outside of WWE. Like, they mentioned, um, when she was coming out of the ring, they mentioned, oh, what, what was his name again? Um, the commentator, not named Josh Matthews. I forget his name off the top of my head, but, yeah, that bloke, Don something, I forget what exactly, he mentioned that, oh, she's escaped the, not the purgatory in Stanford, but something about escaping or doing a time in Stanford, so yeah, cool to see Deanna Prizer have a moment, that was that, as for the tag team stuff in this show, well, for one, we had the opener of this show, which was a good tag team, invitational, 
open challenge where the Rascals called out any tag team. Then we had Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban come out, which that was cool. Motor City Machine Guns. From everything I've gathered, they were a big tag team 10 years ago. I did some research, perhaps a decade ago, the Impact Wrestling... They were a big part of the tag team division. They were one of the great tag teams in Impact Wrestling, or TNA at the time, so... Cool to see them reformed. Alex Shelley, I remember he did the stuff with Kushida in NXT, like, what, the Dusty Cup? Like, seven months ago. So, yeah, Alex Shelley's, he's getting around the place. Now he's with Chris Saban. So, they beat the Rascals in the opener. Good, you know, 15-ish minute match. Then, for the Tag Team Championships, we had the North take on Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock. The match was good. It wasn't, like, outstanding. It picked up pace towards the end. A bit of the psychology didn't make sense. Like, Shamrock got hit with a pile driver, and then he was just kind of standing there, and th there's a cover with Callahan right in front of him. He doesn't do anything to break it up. That was a bit weird, but you know, the match was fine. It was entertaining. It wasn't bad. Like, none of the matches were bad on tonight's show. Just, it wasn't incredible. In the end, the North retained. So, their year-plus title reign continues. Then, afterwards, the aforementioned Motor City Machine Guns came out and made their presence known. So, it was cool to see Motor City Machine Guns challenge the North. That's going to be happening for the tag team titles on Monday, um, Tuesday on Access. So, that would be good. They'll get a bunch of people who tuned in to Slammiversary tonight for the first time in years for Impact Wrestling to watch on Tuesday. So, good for them. Then, as far as other matches, the knockouts, uh, Gauntlet, it was it was interesting. That's the best way I'd have to describe it. Personally, I found seeing all the different knockouts of the Impact Wrestling women's division like interesting because I don't really know most of them, so I found that interesting. In the end, Kylie Ray won. The thing was all right. That's all I'm going to say, really. And then Moose versus Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer, good on him for still wrestling nowadays. He had they had the stuff with the thumbtacks, which was really good. Which you know, like that, um, Moose is holding Tommy Dreamer's head right above the thumbtacks. Dreamer's like screaming. It's probably what's gonna be like for Eye Eye for an Eye tomorrow night. So that was fine. And then the main event: Eddie Edwards, Ace Austin, Trey, the mystery opponent. It ended up being Rich Swan. Which I was just laughing my head off at. Rich Swan, are you kidding me? Then, right after, Eric Young came out, and I was still laughing because Eric Young, Rich Swan, these are people who would be wrestling on WWE Main Event or 205 Live on the undercard. Like, what is this? So, we had a bunch of different eliminations. Eric Young got eliminated, and then he proceeded to bash up Rich Swan's leg. So, Rich Swan was like screaming in pain. Rich Swan then got eliminated, and that left Eddie Edwards and Ace Austin. They went back and forth for a few minutes. Then, Eddie Edwards got the win. So, Eddie Edwards won. Afterwards, there was a bit of shenanigans, and then the Good Brothers came down, Gallows and Anderson, and we ended the show with Eddie Edwards, Gallows and Anderson standing tall. So, that was Impact Wrestling Slammiversary. Overall, pretty good show. I was entertained by it. If you didn't check it out, it's worth a look. I'd probably give it 7 out of 10. I think, well, nothing bad about it, but like not too much that was just overwhelmingly amazing. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, sub. You guys know the drill. See ya.